here for Scruff the Neck TV at Eurosonic, joined by Adam and Andy from Is This, and we do a little vinyl dive to find out their music taste and the albums that have inspired them. So the first question is, what album do you think has inspired your songwriting? Do you want to take this one? I think you've got another one lined up, haven't you? Uh, yeah, well, I, I picked um, Preoccupations. Um, Why that one? Formerly called Viet Cong. Oh! Changed the name for some reason, something to do with upsetting culture or whatever. But anyway, the, um, yeah, no, it's just some really interesting rhythms in it. Um, and uh, like syncopation in the way that the guitars line and everything, and something that I've always tried to like include in, in what we're doing, which is, yeah. Do you think that's coming through more on the new album? Um, yeah, I think so, yeah. Same. A bit like dueling banjos, you know. <laughs> So I love to hear. Andy, have you got one, uh, one that's directly inspired your songwriting? Um, let's have a look. I've got a lot, so there should be something. Um, maybe not inspired songwriting, but then I've got self-titled Rage Against the Machine, which, you know, there's that kind of like funk rock kind of thing that is absolutely not what we do. <laughs> but it was one of them albums that I listened to when I was first getting into like rock music and playing bass. And there's probably a point where I could probably play, one, two, three. I could probably blame most of the, the songs because it was like, you'd go on like Ultimate Guitar, get guitar tabs and learn how to play that. And I don't know, there's just sort of, I don't know. It's an album I've always gone back to. Again, doesn't necessarily come across in the songwriting, but it was something when I was learning to play bass and different rhythms and the way bass sits in music. And sort of sometimes like the way that it kind of take the lead on stuff and quite high up in the mix, bass always seems to sort of be there on Rage Against the Machine, so. Show us yeah. that album cover to the camera. Rage Against the Machine, self-titled. Yes. And yeah. that joins us on to the next question, which is yeah. an album that you've grown up with. I'm guessing that could have been one of them could for you. One of them. Yeah. Have you? Um, oh, Adam's got one ready. I tried to find Bleach. Yeah. Um, and this is this is Nirvana's greatest hit, which is a fucking sacrilege, really. <laughs> but I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't find Bleach or a Neutro, so yeah. So just thought, I just thought you know honourable mention Nirvana, definitely something I grew up with, yeah. definitely something that made me first want to pick up a guitar for sure. Hmm. Um, not this. No. <laughs> this is shit. Don't buy this. Absolute turd. Um, if you get yeah, if you're gonna spend twenty six euros, buy Bleach. Bye Bleach. That's it. Do you think that grunge element has remained in this, this in there? <clears throat> it's deep within my soul. Yeah. You must understand this. You know, it's not, it's not, a, it's not really a music. It's more of a way of life. It's for, for me. You know, um, not this album though. Bleach. <laughs> no, bleach. You know. Bleach. Uh, but yeah, definitely the, the, the grunge thing's great, isn't it? It's just yeah. miserable rock music. Who doesn't like that? You know. It's Bleach. true. It's Bleach. true. It's what. It's what We're was dining out on that for a. It's yeah, yeah. eight years. Yeah. It's, what, it's what those middle-aged white men are into yeah. these days. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Andy, yeah. an album that you've grown up listening to? Uh, another self-titled one, Placebo self-titled. Um, I remember songs like 36 Degrees, what else is on it? Bruce Pristine, Nancy Boy, oh. uh, Teenage Angst. That, 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 those videos were always around, around on like Kerrang! and MTV2 and stuff like that. And when, when I was younger, I'd go out to school and I'd put a videotape in. And I just let the tape start and record for as long as I was out at school or college. Yeah. And then like get back and then just skip through and see what songs I like were on there. Because this, this was just before like downloading. So yeah. like how, how can I get this music on repeat? Right, well I'll just stick a VHS in, record it. And there was, I remember Placebo was on like MTV2 and Kerrang! at the time. And Brian Molko in Placebo has got that kind of, um, that voice where I didn't know whether it was a man or a woman. And he was yeah. quite androgynous in that he kind of had like a short bob and sometimes wear like leather pants and things like that. And until like Wikipedia came about or you'd read and you go, oh, the singer's called Brian. Yeah. I, I, I always just thought it might be a woman with a fairly deep voice who was singing. And yeah. th th there was always that intrigue with Placebo. But um, yeah, Placebo, self-titled for yeah, me. If you are going to buy a Placebo record, <laughs> buy this one. Market music Don't buy that one. What's on that, like Special K? Yeah. Special K. This is really, they're really coming to their own on this Isn't album. Pure Morning on that as well? No. No. Not this one. Is it Special K, Tasting Men, Slow to the Wage? Yeah, it's a great oh, record, man. that. Black Eyed. Oh, Black Eyed's a great song. It's a great album. It's yeah. just a great album. There we go. Um, this is the next one. So this is a try a tricky one. 
Do you know, let's make it an easy one. An album that you're really into at the moment. Ooh. That you're listening to a lot now. Uh, this one. Oh. Place to Bury Strangers. Super. Really good. We were actually going to support these. Oh, well, really? Yeah. Don't know what happened. But it was like right early on. I think it was like our th- maybe we fourth. Our third or fourth gig, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We were going to support them. I think it got cancelled, but I'm gutted actually because the guy who's the singer and guitar player in these, um, Ackerman is called, and he's the guy who designs all the um, what they called uh, the the pedal the Death guitar pe- Death by Audio yeah, pedals yeah. in New York. Yeah, he makes some really good guitar pedals as well. Yeah. And he very much uses them on the on on these albums. And it's just great. It's just a fantastic album. It's like it's like noise. Like I don't know. I don't know about genres with things like this. It's like it's like noise rock, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. It's, it's like yeah, post punk, but really noisy. You know, it's great. I love it. Really I mean, there's so much post punk's become so saturated that there's so many subgenres to it these days. Yeah, that's it's almost. It's almost like not not no wave or whatever, is it? But it's it is very it is almost no wave, isn't it? It's just I, I I've not listened I've not listened to that one, but yeah, I remember it was I think the first I'd heard of them was when they did a KEXP session or something like that, and then we got offered the support, and then for whatever reason it didn't happen. But um, it was probably too early for us actually. That yeah, it's that. probably we'd have got absolutely fucking put away yeah. if we'd have supported them. But you're you're coming up to your third album now, yeah, yeah. and like so, if you were, had to say all this manifestation, if there was a band out there you could support, who would you both go for now? No one. No one. No. You're done. You're done supporting. No, I just want a headline. <laughs> it's just better headline. Yeah. 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 Even want to be the support act. I mean, it's great, and it's when people give you a leg up, but. So if if Pixies no. or Interpol or them not came and knocking, you. You turn oh, yeah, them down. Take it. Obviously, you take <laughs> it. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you say like, you know, who are you desperate to support? No. Not really. No. I just pref- I, I like the idea of growing on our own, doing our own thing. You know. But I suppose, live or dead, have they got to be alive? Uh, we can have them dead. Dead. <laughs> Might be a, a bit more of a different show. I'd like to support dead Jimi Hendrix. Not <laughs> not alive. Just like I want, we want to go on. And then after we finish, they just drag out his corpse onto the <laughs> stage. <laughs> I think we found how we're going to post this interview online to tease it. <laughs> <laughs> the bones of Jimi Hendrix and his guitar. The little burnt wood. That sounds like an album. Guitar, yeah. Yeah. What, the, the bones of... The one he set on fire on yeah, Woodstock. Yeah, little yeah. Bits of burnt guitar just drag him onto the stage yeah. with him. I reckon he'd still yeah. be... I reckon he'd still be better than us. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> still be better than us. Yeah. Okay, an album you're listening to at the moment, Andy. <laughs> and I forgot what we were doing. Fuck, you know, uh, that's the question. Yeah. <laughs> not, not Electric Ladyland by uh, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Uh, uh, we by uh, Arcade Fire. Um, for the record, I don't think it's their best by any measure. No, no. But Did the cameraman just give an audible gasp when <laughs> yeah. you said that? Yeah. <laughs> you said we by Arcade Fire. went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think it's the best by any stretch, but... Um, most bands would still take that as, oh, yeah. as like their best ever. What I do like now with Arcade Fire is they're still doing full albums that flow, and it's not many bands are still well, yeah, trying to achieve that. I mean, it's like here they've listed like there's the, the first two tracks on side B, the Lightning one and two. They're actually two tracks, but they've listed it as one track because yeah, it yeah. does just it go does. into one another. And the transition in that is 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 absolutely spectacular. Um, like I say, I think I think something like Suburbs or Neon Babylon, even the first album, Neighbourhoods. Yeah. Is 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 a much better album, but it's still a solid eight, nine, ten out of ten record, isn't it? Really. I really like everything now, mate. I really like it. I, 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 I just couldn't, couldn't get on board with that. I just it was it's it's flavors, what? disco flavors on it. Well, well, it was Arcade Fire trying to be ABBA, wasn't it? Really. Yeah, well, fucking well, that's brilliant. Yeah. So that's what I always wanted from Arcade yeah. Fire. <laughs> okay, here is another one. Seems so we're talking about ABBA. Uh, yeah. What's an album you stick on at a party? Uh, Have you managed to find any? <laughs> Adam looks like, nope. <laughs> I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one. The Skull Snaps yeah. record. There was this old disco funk band in the 70s called Skull Snaps. Um, no one's ever really heard of them, but it, their album is just bangers. Just funk bangers. And uh, I don't know, Skull Snaps. Just go on Spotify. Not that many listeners. 
No, I don't know. I don't think they even ever played gigs. I think they were just like a studio band, weren't they? They were like a studio project. Yeah, but they've got a really, they've got a song that people, well, some people know called "I'm Your Pimp," and you've never ever heard a mix with louder hi hats. Yeah, it's insane. Like to sabotage the record yeah. with <laughs> how loud it is. It's There's ridiculous. So that if they were mixing that in the studio, someone either went turn them up and everyone was okay with it or yeah. someone said should we turn them down and someone went no, no. <laughs> it's got to be one or the other okay final yeah. question if you're going to gift the vinyl to someone which one would you gift and who to um, I would gift this one Velvet Underground to you oh why, well, why that because there is no cooler band than the Velvet Underground it's true I, I mean the closest that anyone came was the Ramones but still not close, was it really? I mean, you know, it's a difference between like a burger and a sandwich, isn't it? You know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I everyone likes a sandwich, but not if there's a burger on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I love that as a phrase. It's absolutely, absolutely the, the coolest band in the world, and I sort of feel like they were one of the first to get this whole like, you know, like getting Nico involved and all that sort of stuff, and I just, I just thought it was well, just Velvet Underground as well had that thing, didn't they, where they had it going on with Andy Warhol? But they also like set up almost like fake pop opportunities, didn't they? So yeah. that you know, like when they'd be play going in a studio or playing a show, they'd get like almost fake paparazzi to be there because people yeah. would go, "Wow, what? Who's this band? What are they?" And they'd, 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 yeah, they'd wait outside clubs and sort of pap them and then that papping became actually real because they became so popular yeah it's basically um, like you know the original TikTok yeah do you know what I mean there you have yeah. it you get people running around flashing bulbs at them and stuff and as well what, the best thing about Valley Underground is Lou Reed's in him yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go so, you know. gotta be the Reed okay for Andy final question Mate. who are you gifting and who to uh, Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars to if I ever have kids, I'll give one of my kids this because, well, it's Bowie, isn't it? Yeah. It's they'd education. Have to, they'd, have, they'd have to be at the age where they don't break the record player or pull <laughs> the arm off it or scratch it or something like that. So they'd have to wait. But yeah, it's just Bowie, isn't it? You could get like it's a burner copy of it. You know, yeah. like a, your copy and, and then, and then like, yeah, like, like the, listening copy, the kids, the shelf copy. The, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the kids copy, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah just, just Bowie because it's, well, it's Bowie, isn't it? It's just, there we go. The goat, the goat. It, as, as, as I believe people call people now, the goat. What does that mean? Greatest of all time, apparently. I've heard people say it, yeah, I don't, never knew that. <laughs> there you go. That was Is This Vinyl Deep Dive. Thank you very much for watching.